Hello everyone and welcome aboard Symphony of the Seas for today's ship tour. Before we get started, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below if you don't already and you want to follow along all of the videos that we have coming from every single day of our Western Caribbean voyage on board Symphony of the Seas. Let's get started. On this channel, we like to start our ship tours all the way at the front of the ship and as far up as we can. So here we are on deck 15 with the solarium. This is a adult only area. It is 16 and up. And there is also a little solarium buffet that's in here. Kids are able to go in there. They just can't hang out in the actual solarium itself. This is a big relaxation area. Lots of loungers hanging out around uh, the decks here. And one really cool thing is that in the solarium, you do get the option to go out onto the bridge wings, which is really nice. So you get a really unique view down the side of the ship or looking forward as well. Um, here on the port side of the ship, we have a piece that actually goes a little bit further forward where you have a little area where you can look straight down and it's glass that you can walk out onto and you can see straight down to the water. So that's really, really neat. As you head back and start making your way out of the solarium, you do have the cantilevered whirlpools that are on each side of the ship. These are giant hot tubs that are basically hanging out over the side. And we're going to hop up to deck 16 as we overlook the pool area, or the main pool area here on board Symphony of the Seas. You do have a big hot tub and a large pool with some loungers that are actually sitting inside of the water, which is really, really neat. And that goes for both sides as well. And then, of course, as we turn around, we get a look at the perfect storm water slides. We have two slides on one side, and we have the big, what I like to call the toilet bowl on the other side. The blue and the yellow kind of intertwine and just twist around in between each other. And then we have the yellow and green one that does have that little toilet bowl aspect of it um, where you kind of circle around and then you go down into a little a chute, basically, uh, where you get off the water slide. And then, of course, as we head further back, we do have more pools and hot tubs on one side. And as we head over to the starboard side on towards the rear, we do have another hot tub along with Splashaway Bay, which is a little water park for little kids. So if you have a little young one that you're planning on taking on the cruise, this is a great spot for them to play around. Up on deck 17, which we're looking at here, we do have a little lounge for suite guests only. There also is an area up front as well for suite guests only. Um, as we look at the sides here as well and towards the back, we have a look at the loft suites. Of course, I cannot get access to that because I was not staying in a suite. But that is pretty much deck 17, sweet guests only. And then we're going to head straight into the Windjammer on deck 16. This is pretty much going to be just like your generic buffet food that you're going to find on board a cruise ship. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, very large area, so you can find a lot of food options here, and you can find a lot of seating as well. You do get a pretty good look at the back of the ship as well, and of course, if you're going to be towards the side, you get a look off the side of the ship as well, which is really neat. And there's a really cool staircase as you come out of the Windjammer Cafe and head from 16 down to 15 that has like little piano steps. And as you can hear, you have a little song that plays each note that you take on each step, which is really neat. Down on deck 15, underneath the Windjammer Cafe, we do have a look at the video arcade, which is really cool that I see Luigi's Mansion here, which is a really cool Nintendo game that I really enjoy. And then, of course, you have all the ski ball, racing games, air hockey, all sorts of fun games uh, for the little ones to play. Or if you're an adult that likes to play games instead of the casino, it's a great place for you as well. And then right across from this, this is one of my favorite parts about the ship. Um, you do get like a thing where you can buy certain things that you wouldn't find in the gift shop necessarily. Um, especially this one here that has like sunscreen, aloe, things like that. Uh, one of the funny things I noticed is that the one that we just looked at there had Pokemon cards in it, which is funny, but like, you know, you have toothpaste, shaving cream, sunscreen, chargers. This one here is a charging station. If you want to like leave your phone in there, it'll charge it up for you. So that's a really, really cool thing. I've never seen this on another ship before. Adding further back on deck 15, though, we have El Loco Fresh, which is a Mexican style buffet that's on Symphony of the Seas. Very good food. They usually have uh, this for lunch and closes right around five o'clock for dinner. Um, so if you want to eat it early dinner, that's a good option for you. But a very good food there. Heading further back, we have the basketball court, which is another crazy thing that they have such a full size basketball court and it only takes up a small portion of this rear deck. 
And then right behind the basketball court, we have the Flow Rider, which is a surfing simulator. On the Oasis class, at least for the first four, there's one on each side of the ship. And then in the middle, we have the Ultimate Abyss, which is a 10-story dry slide that you lay down in a mat, and it'll drop you from deck 16 all the way down to 6 on the boardwalk. And right in the middle of the two Flow Riders as well, we have the Wipeout Bar. If you want to grab a drink while you watch somebody... Um, you know, take on the Ultimate Abyss or the Flow Riders, then that's a definitely a cool option for you. Would not recommend drinking and riding the Flow Rider. Though. Dropping down again, right behind the Flow Riders on the opposite side of that basketball court, we have the Symphony Dunes, which is the little nine-hole mini golf course that's here on board the ship. Most Royal Caribbean ships have a mini golf course, but this is the one that we have on Symphony of the Seas. Really cool, cool decorations, surfboards, little van there. So really, really cool. And then here we have a look at the zip line. If you can see like the thin wire that's kind of going across from that little square gate right in the middle above the S in Symphony, that wire goes all the way across and to the opposite side or the end of that mini golf course. So it's really cool. It goes right over the boardwalk. So you're about 10 stories up as you zip line across the ship. Also, over by the mini golf course, we have a little enclosed area. It has some ping pong tables, so maybe it's just to catch like the balls if it were to go flying out. Um, and to my knowledge, this is also one of the teen lounges in there right next to it. And then we have a little hallway of really nothing, but we do have the ice cream, if you can see that crew member in the pink shirt. And on the other side of there, this is actually across from that arcade we have the living room which is that teen lounge that i was talking about and then here in the middle we actually have the symphony of the seas ship model this thing is huge it's got to be at least three three ish three and a half feet long super super cool i've always wanted one of these just like in my living room or something so so cool dropping down to deck 14 we have these seven hearts lounge this is actually just like a bit of a internet cafe pretty much lounges like this are pretty outdated not many ships have internet cafes since most ships have really good Wi-Fi now, um, but it is a great place in case you don't get the internet package and you want to get online real quick. Dropping down to deck 12, because there is no deck 13, we have Wonderland, one of the specialty restaurants here on board Symphony of the Seas. I unfortunately didn't try Wonderland just because the food options there weren't to my liking. I'm a very picky eater, as some of you may have noticed in my vlogs. Um, so nothing here really caught my caught my eye, but it is a very unique restaurant. I would love to try it out. There's just nothing that I personally would eat here. But it's really cool, though, because you have menus that you actually have. Basically, you get a cup of water and a paintbrush, and you brush the water across the piece of paper, and it reveals the menu for you. So it's really, really neat. You get a great view that overlooks the boardwalk as well. So it's a really neat place. And as we drop down to deck eight in the back of the ship, we have Dazzles, which is a nightclub on board the ship. I could always see people in here dancing and having a great time from my boardwalk balcony whenever I would check in or kind of look that way during the nighttime. Uh, so it looks like a very, very fun and uh, great nightlife type of area. Spans decks nine and eight. So a very, very cool area. Very popular as well. Looks like they have live music and a big dance floor for everyone. So I would definitely recommend checking this out. And now we're down to Central Park, Deck 8 midship. We're going to be going from the rear all the way forward. Central Park is, of course, just a large kind of enclosed area of the ship. You can see upwards, so it's not like it's covered or anything like that. But it has lots of bars, lounges, restaurants, and shopping here as well. All the plants that you see here on Central Park... They're all real plants. There's people that water them. You know, there's groundskeeping crew basically on board the ships. Uh, but here we have Chop's Grill off to one side. That was very, very good. I did have that one night on board. Right across from it, we have the Rising Tide Bar and, of course, 150 Central Park, which is another specialty restaurant. Uh, the Rising Tide Bar was really, really cool. It's a bar that goes from Deck 8 for Central Park all the way down to Deck 5 for the Royal Promenade and back up. Right in the middle of Central Park, we have the Trellis Bar, which is another one of the bars that we have here. And just another look as we go through some of the greenery that is on the Central Park areas. Super, super neat and just really cool that they're able to do something like this on a ship. 
like I said, we can see upwards. We can see the the water slides up on decks 15 and 16. So those that's really cool. We also have the Park Cafe, which is a very popular restaurant that is complimentary. Um, it, you can go in and get sandwiches, things like that in there. So very good food in there. I think we had lunch there a couple times. And here we have the Italian restaurant on board, Jamie's Italian. One of the specialty restaurants, so it is going to be a charge to eat there, but I hear it is very good. I just did not try it on this cruise. And all the way forward in Central Park, we have Vintages, which is the wine bar on board Symphony of the Seas. Exclusive for wine, so if you're looking for liquor or beers or anything like that, you're not going to find it there at Vintages, but it is a very, very nice wine bar that's on board. Across from it, we also have some of the very high-end shopping here in Central Park and just on board the ship in general. And dropping down to deck six, we have Vitality at Sea. This is the spot fitness center. So if you want to get a workout in while you're on board the ship, this is a great place to do it. Or if you just want to relax one day and get a massage or something like that, this is definitely the place to do it as well. There is like a shake bar inside there as well. So if you want like a smoothie or anything like that, um, after like a pre-workout or post-workout, then that's a good place to do it as well. It does span decks five and six. Now we're gonna jump down to deck five on the running track. This is on the outside area. All the way forward as well. It's kind of weird how they did it, but the Vitality at Sea is almost like in the bow section. But then on deck five, we have an entrance to the Royal Theater. The Royal Theater spans three, four, and five. This is where the Broadway shows are held and all the other shows. Moving forward, we're now in the Royal Promenade. We're going to be heading towards the rear of the ship. So first off, we have Boleros, which is one of the bars and lounges here on board the ship. Another nightlife type of place is very active at night. I believe there's also some live music there. Right outside of that, we also have the Starbucks on board. One tip for the Starbucks is that it is actually a lot more expensive. You get the same menu and the same drinks. Everything is the same at Cafe Promenade. And if you're platinum status or above with Royal Caribbean, you do get a discount on those drinks at Cafe Promenade, but they don't apply at Starbucks. But then, of course, on the opposite side of the Starbucks, you also have On Air, which is like a karaoke lounge and bar, which is really cool. Didn't try that out or I didn't do any of that. It's not really my thing, but I hear it is a lot of fun. The Royal Promenade, you have a lot of shopping options, many, many options. There's even some things with jewelry here in the center, but you have like the Regalia stores. You also have Sorrento's, which is one of my personal favorites. You guys know if you've been watching the videos. Sorrento's is one of my favorite restaurants on board any Royal Caribbean ship. Here we have Copper and Kettle. This is like an Irish themed pub that's on board Symphony of the Seas. I hear it's very popular. I believe this is on other ships as well, but it's just Mostly an Irish themed pub, which is really neat. My cruise on board Symphony of the Seas was near Christmas, so we do have a really good look at the Christmas tree. It was huge, very well decorated, and very bright, so really, really neat to have that and be sailing during the holidays. Um, then here we have the Royal Shops. You can buy any Royal Caribbean logo merchandise, T-shirts, ship models, jackets, and things like that. Lots of stuff you can buy here, most likely going to have a Royal Caribbean logo on it. And then here we have the Cafe Promenade, like I mentioned earlier. It's the exact same menu as the Starbucks, so if you want to get your Starbucks coffee, or even just some regular coffee off to the side here on the right, um, you can definitely get that coffee here. And across from there, we have the next cruise desk, where you can book any future Royal Caribbean cruises if you want to. One of the really cool pieces that are on the Royal Promenade is this like smushed up, Volkswagen bug that was made into a ball, which is pretty cool. Uh, we also have a look at the rising tide bar that I mentioned earlier up on Central Park. This is it here, and it will raise from this spot all the way up to where we were earlier in Central Park, which is super cool. Off to the side of the rising tide bar, we do have guest services. If you have any problems or if you just have any generic questions, um, definitely come up to guest services and they'll be able to help take care of anything that you need. And on the opposite side of guest services, we have the Bionic Bar. This is one of the newest additions or one of the new things that started being rolled out throughout the fleet um, since the start of the Quantum class. I just made it over to the Oasis class here. Robot bartenders, that's pretty much all I have to say. It's really, really neat. We are gonna hop back up to deck six 
as we start making our way further back, we do have Focus Photo Gallery, which is where if you get any photos taken on board the ship, this is where you can look those up. You're going to tap your card against the little scanner here, and it's going to pull up all of your information off the TV. You select your language, and then from there you can kind of pick through the photos that you want and have them ordered to pick them up later on. Here we have a little kiosk for any shore excursions if you want to try to book any last minute shore excursions. And on the opposite side of that focus photo gallery, we have the loyalty desk. And we also have one of the Royal Caribbean favorites, the schooner bar. The schooner bar is on every single Royal Caribbean ship and it is very popular. I believe there's usually live music here. And of course you can always grab one of your favorite drinks and just kind of relax here. And here on deck six, all the way in the back, we have the boardwalk, which is one of the big neighborhood areas here on board Symphony of the Seas and all of the Oasis class. As we begin making our way through and into the boardwalk area, we have some little sculptures of the carousel animals that are on there. And off to the left-hand side here, we have the dog house, which is a hot dog stand, basically. And then, of course, here we have one of the biggest things on the boardwalk is the carousel. Oasis class is still the only ships to actually have a full-size carousel on board, with Icon soon to have that when it comes out in 2024. This is all connected to Playmakers, but we do have another mini arcade where you have things like Mario Kart, claw machines, and just air hockey, other things like that. There's also booths for Playmakers, say if you want to eat here while your kids are playing games. That's also an option as well. It's a good little thing that they've added in. But here we have Playmakers Sports Bar. Very popular area. I always like to go here at least once when I'm on a ship that has it. Uh, has all sorts of TVs, always playing sports. Um, I believe the World Cup was going on during this time. Uh, so they always had that playing at night. And then over by the carousel as well, we have Sugar Beach, which is like a little candy store as well. You can get some ice cream here. Um, it is a pay for ice cream, but you can get some if you'd like when the stuff up top is free if you want the free ice cream. Here we have the Surf Shack as well. This is just another non-Royal Caribbean merchandise store. And then here we have another Royal Caribbean favorite, Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets is a pay-to-eat place uh, for dinner only, though. They do serve breakfast here, and the breakfast is free. But if you would like to have this for dinner, you do have to pay for dinner. I think it was only around $15 per person. And here we have a look at the ending of the Ultimate Abyss. So earlier in the video when I said this goes from deck 16 down to 6, this is where it lets out. And all the way in the very back of the ship, we have the Aqua Theater. So here we have all the Aqua shows on Symphony of the Seas. It's a show called Hero, spelled H-I-R-O. Very, very cool show. I highly recommend it. They even do some high diving off of the two giant pillars on each side of the crown and anchor there. Very, very cool show. Definitely go check it out. On each side of the Aqua Theater we, as well, we have the rock climbing walls. There are two rock climbing walls on each Oasis class ship. So here we have one on one side, and here's the other on the other side. They're identical. I don't believe there's any differences between the two. Dropping down to deck five, we also have the main dining room here on board Symphony of the Seas. This dining room is spanning decks three, four, and five, so it's a huge main dining room. This is for my time dining, so if you don't have a set dining time, I believe it was on deck four, and then the others were for the standard um, if you already have your selected dining times. So this is the main dining room. If this is where you're wanting to have dinner every night, this is likely where you would go unless you go to one of the specialty restaurants or the Windjammer. To one side of it, we also have Izumi, which is the hibachi and sushi restaurant here on board Symphony of the Seas, one of these specialty restaurants. So this is where they make all the food in front of you, which is a really cool experience. Didn't do it on this one, but I have heard it is very good. Down on deck four, here we have the Casino Royale. This is the casino on board Symphony of the Seas. This is down in what they call the Entertainment Place, where they also have other things such as the comedy clubs and stuff like that, what we'll get to in a minute. But this is a huge, huge casino, one of the largest at sea to my knowledge. Um, I'm sure there's probably bigger since it's, there. I know there's like gamble specific ships, but very, very large casino. And also we have the casino bar here right in the middle. So if you want to do blackjack, poker, slot machines, anything like that, they pretty much have it all down here. And then as we come out, we have what we call the attic. This is the comedy club on board Symphony of the Seas. 
And here we have Studio B. This is the ice rink. This is where they do, on Symphony of the Seas, it is 1977, which is the name of the show, but that is the ice show that they have on board. And down here as well, they have the Diamond Club. And a small little lounge here off to the side as well. It's called Jazz on Four. And that is all for today's ship tour of Symphony of the Seas. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you don't already and you want to follow along our videos that we would made every single day while we were on this ship for our seven-day Western Caribbean voyage. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.